In this set of notes, we're going to continue looking at correlation analysis. And so in the last set of notes, we alluded to two different types of correlation, the first one being the multiple correlation coefficient. So previously we discussed how R squared is useful for assessing model fit. And in module three, we discussed the relationship between R squared and R in context of the simple linear regression model. And usually in the simple linear regression model, uh, when we refer to R, we often will also denote it as little r. Either one is fine. For multiple linear regression models, the square root of R squared is known as the multiple correlation coefficient. So we can also talk about um, that square root. So we've got our first definition here. So our definition for the multiple correlation coefficient it is a measure of the overall linear association of one, sorry, of one response variable y with k predictor variables. And it's denoted by the following. It's a measure of the strength of association between y and the best fitting linear combination of x1 through xk. In other words, what this model does, or probably what our multiple correlation coefficient does, is it makes a comparison between all of the observed y's and all of the fitted y's where those fitted y's are found using the multiple linear regression model with those variables. So here is our formula. And the main thing to notice here with our formula is notice that our formula is really looking at yi's and it's looking at y hats. And so if we look here, what we'll notice is that we have yi's, we also have the mean of the yi's, we have y hats, and we also have the mean of the y hats. So that's how we can see by looking at the formula, the only things that are really involved in the multiple correlation coefficient are the y's and the fitted values. We don't actually see the individual x's there. Um, they are accounted for though in the y hats. And so again, y hat is the predicted value for the ith individual, and y hat bar is the mean of the predicted values. And then we can also show that r squared is equal to the following, and so this is that same r squared that we've seen previously when we've talked about multiple r squared. So for example, if we looked at our animus example from you know several previous note sets, again consider that we've got this model where we have our response variable y animus, and then we have our four different predictor variables. We could calculate the multiple correlation in R as follows. So what these lines of code are doing, and we'll look more at these in lab next week, but what I've done here up above in the code is I fit that multiple linear regression model using that main effects model, and I called it model one. So we've seen that before in the code. And then what I'm doing is I'm using the dollar sign to actually call different pieces from the model. So the first piece, what I'm doing is I'm actually calling animus, and this is gonna give me the observed values of Y. I could have just as equally called these directly from the data set. And then here, what this is doing is this is gonna call all the fitted values. So in terms of what we looked at up above, this part of the code, the first part is calling the y eyes, the second one is calling the y hat eyes. And we find that that correlation is about 60%. And then the other way we could find this is we could calculate multiple r squared, which we've done before. We find the multiple r squared, and then we could just take the square root of it. And notice we get the exact same value either way. So what this is giving us is this is giving us that multiple correlation coefficient. So in other words, if we look back up here and we see our notation that we have here, what this is doing is this is giving us the correlation between animus given our four different predictor variables, where X1 is the percentage of African Americans living in the media market, X2 is the percentage of Hispanics living in the media market, X3 is the percentage of those with at least a bachelor's degree, and then X4 is the percentage of those that are at least 65 years old. So the computed value of the multiple R squared is 
And this tells us approximately 36% of the observed sampling variability of animus can be explained by the main effects model with the four predictors above. And so that whole sentence there, this is all review. We've seen this before in terms of R squared. The new piece is the second sentence, which says the corresponding multiple correlation coefficient is equal to 0.598. And again, that tells us about the correlation between our observed and our predicted values. And we would hope that they have high correlation between them. The other type of correlation coefficient we could talk about is a partial correlation coefficient. So a partial correlation coefficient is a measure of strength of the linear relationship between the response variable or one of the predictor variables, and we're just going to generically denote that as y, and a single predictor variable after we control for the effects of q predictor variables, or in this context we'll call them control variables. So whereas what we just looked at looked at the correlation between y and y hat, here we're going to look at the correlation between two variables while we control for all of the other ones. The order of the partial co correlation coefficient is determined by how many controlling variables there are. So for example, if there are two controlling variables, then the par partial correlation coefficient of the second order and is denoted by the following. So let's again look at our animus example. We're still going to look at those four predictor variables with our response being animus, and we're going to fit that main effects model. Now first of all notice since there are four predictor variables, the highest order partial correlation coefficient that we could calculate is the third order. So let's talk about why that is. So we know that y and x are the two variables that we are going to compare. So the y variable could be animus or one of the predictor variables. Okay, so y could be any of the variables. X has to be one of the predictor variables. So notice when we look at y and x, we know that between y and x, we have to use at least one of our predictor variables, x1 and x4. So that will only leave three possible control variables. So that's why at most we could have a third order partial correlation coefficient. And so note x and y can be any combination of the five variables above. Only the four predictor variables can be control variables. So in other words, animus cannot be a control variable. And so again, that is why at most we could have a third order partial uh, correlation coefficient. So for example, we could look at the partial correlation coefficient for animus and the percentage of those who are at least 65 years old living in the media market while controlling for the other three variables. So if we wanted to write this out, we could write it as follows. We could have R, and we're going to have R between animus. So I'm going to use these abbreviations that I have here just to help me out. So I could look at R between turn off my highlighter there. I could look at R between animus and the percentage of those who are at least 65. And then I'm going to control for the other three. And this is what this would look like in R. So we have to use a package in R. It's called PPCore. We see it right here. And then the test we're going to use is PCore.test. So notice here in this line of code, so it's a little, the line of code's kind of long, so it's gotten split into two separate lines. But if we look here, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call Y. So notice that matches with the animus that I have here. Next, I'm going to call the age 65 plus, which is my next variable. And then what I'm going to do is notice I've used the combine function here, and I'm going to combine my other three variables that I'm using as the controls into a vector. So in other words, these three right here. 
So this function takes three pieces of information. It takes the two different variables that we want the correlation for, and then the variables we're controlling for. And notice it gives me a couple different pieces of information. The first one is the estimate, so that's the actual correlation. The rest of these are a p-value and a statistic, and these correspond with a hypothesis test testing to see if this correlation is different from zero. And that is going to end this note set.